welcome to today's video. In today's video, I'm going to be talking to you about why salt by itself is not the problem and then why it's actually not bad for you. First, salt is actually two electrolytes. It is made up of 40% sodium and 60% chloride. So that's why when you look at nutrition labels, it just lists it as sodium. It should also include chloride in the label, but a lot of times they don't. So that's why you just see it as sodium and that's why doctors usually talk about your sodium reduction. So around 90% of the sodium in your body is actually found in your blood and fluids in your body. And then sodium is essential because it allows nutrients to get into your cells. It helps enzymes function normally. It allows nerves to send electronic signals and it helps your muscles recover properly. So if you actually intake too much sodium that your body needs, various organs and hormones such as your kidneys actually get rid of the excess sodium through your urine. So your body's very good at regulating the proper amount of sodium that you actually need from when you're like, if you're overeating it through your food. So your body's really good at regulating that. So as long as you're metabolically healthy and your body's functioning properly like it should, that every organ and every hormone is working properly to its full potential, you actually don't have anything to worry about if you are overeating sodium. And also, if you are eating a real foods diet, you actually are limiting your salt intake in general anyway because processed foods are what is really high in sodium and of course those processed foods are what are causing metabolic disease. So if you do have too high or too low of sodium, it could be for a numerous reasons. One could be because you have a kidney problem, you may be dehydrated, you could possibly be a diabetic, uh, you could be taking a diuretic medication or another type of medication that affects your sodium levels. You may have had surgery, just had surgery, uh, had an injury or a serious illness. You may have a liver condition. You could have heart failure and certain types of cancers as well can cause your sodium to be high or low. Heart disease, obesity, diabetes, and some brain and lung diseases as well are just to you know, name a few reasons why it's possible that your sodium levels can be too high or too low. So hence metabolic disease, hence why your body's not functioning properly. It can't clear out the sodium properly like it's supposed to do. So over 70% of Americans sodium intake is actually from processed foods and restaurants. So sodium is not the issue. The processed foods and a high carb added sugar and trans fat diet are the reasons for high blood pressure, heart disease, diabetes, obesity, cancers, etc. So eating all of those processed foods loaded with sodium because you're talking about, if you think about it, you have sodium bicarbonate, which is baking soda, I believe, or baking powder. <laughs> and if you're eating a lot of baked goods, cakes, um, anything that comes out of a box that's a cake, uh, crackers, anything like that that's going to rise and, and they're not using yeast, that's actually even, that's sodium. So you're adding even that much more sodium into your diet for eating all that processed stuff instead of just adding it yourself via salt. So the mainstream guidelines suggest that we eat 1.5 to 2.3 grams of sodium per day. These recommendations have led to actually low sodium levels in individuals and low sodium levels actually lead to low blood pressure, low hormone levels, reduced kidney function, heart failure, elevated LDL and triglyceride levels, and insulin resistance. So they're telling us to lower our salt intake, which is actually not good either. So salt actually helps with a lot of things in your body to include wound healing, increased blood volume, faster recovery from exercise and injuries, improved hydration status, it boosts your mood and metabolism, and helps increase thermogenetics. So you may be asking, well, why do ketogenic diets, low carb, high fat diets uh, promote salt? And why it's make, like Avery says, to eat salt to taste, make sure you're getting enough salt or sodium. Well, low insulin levels that the diet, so like the carnivore lifestyle and the keto diet create, may cause extra sodium to be lost through urination. So 
It is more of a concern to have too low of sodium on a ketogenic diet than too much sodium. So the actual suggested intake of sodium, because this is where they found people feel their best at, is they eat between 10 to 17 grams of salt per day. So that's about two to three teaspoons of salt per day. And I probably eat more the closer to, or probably over some days, the three teaspoons of salt per day because I drink at least one packet of Element Electrolytes a day. I also take a half a serving of the Keto Chow Daily Minerals. I also salt my food to taste as well. So I am usually probably on the higher end of my salt intake, which is good. So you kind of find out where you feel is best. And plus I do exercise I do work out, so I try to make sure that I'm also eating a little bit more salt than I probably normally would because of that. So how can you know what your sodium level is? Well, you can get your annual blood work done and ask for a sodium test, which is usually part of the basic blood panel anyway when you get it done. Um, If you are not sure about what blood work to get, you can always look up Dr. Barry's lab results book. And it actually will tell you what labs you should get every single year. And you can request those labs. Now, some of those labs your doctor may not want you to have. For one, some of them can be expensive. Two, they may not do them. But you can actually get uh, your doctor to write a prescription for those blood, the blood work that you want done. And you can go to like, I think it's like Quest Labs if it's in your local area. Or I think... I don't know if Walgreens does it, but there's places like that that if you take your doctor's prescription, if your um, insurance covers it, so like my insurance, I can take it to Quest, and they will run the panels, and it's like not too expensive. So if your doctor can't run some of those tests, you can always take them somewhere else to get them tested. But you can get those tests done to kind of figure out what your health status is, basically. So there you have it. Salt is not the problem. The standard American diet and what they tell us to eat is the problem. And like always, don't forget that like button. Check out that join button. Make sure you subscribe. And I'll see you guys soon.